I'm Kurt Jose, proud granddad of and today now nine grandchildren. And this is one of our projects that I've done with the grandchildren uh, a couple years ago. You can see this on YouTube with Pool Submarine and then Pool Submarine 2. I had some requests to help <laughs> others build this, and so I'm going to take you through a nut and bolts explanation. explanation of how the submarine was constructed, how it's operated, and basically how a submarine works. This submarine works the same way that nuclear ballistic submarines do, uh, and it actually works very well in our pool. I have prepared a set of plans that uh, I am showing you now in the, in the picture that have the dimensions of the submarines and of the, of the basic parts that go together. Uh, I'd like you to think about this as four main pieces. The upper deck, the bottom, they're joined together with uprights, four of them. And then the head dome and the periscope and the upper structure that has the vent for the ballast tanks. Um, so when you build it, use the plans to build the, an upper deck and a bottom. Put those together. Attach your head dome, which is an acrylic salad bowl and then put the upper piece on and later on you can play around with the periscope. That's, that's a new gadget for us. So I'll take you through the details of that. The upper deck has the uh, blow negative uh, releasing the air. So the way, the way the submarine works is the upper and lower and side and upper tubes, the two inch pipes, make up the ballast tank. The ballast tank is open to the bottom through these two holes and it stays open. So we trap a bubble of air in here and we can let a lot of it out with opening this valve that's attached to this cross piece on the upper deck. We can let a little bit of it out by actuating this small air jet valve that's at the highest point of the ballast tank. So we can trim the submarine to go down. We blow negative and let the air out. That takes us down. To come back up, we introduce air back into the system through the connection at the rear center uh, top cross piece and it has another air valve that lets the air in from the scuba tank which I'm going to show you in a minute. This valve is actuated by a swivel that comes up to this lever so we can go up when we go up this pulls down on this and this puts air into the ballast tank when we go down it pulls down on this upper jet releasing air out of the ballast tank and letting the water come in so this lever is a one one lever to go up and down with the submarine we started off unmotorized and that worked pretty well just swimming at the side with the kids in it and running it up and down with the scuba tank. But a really nice improvement was to add this trolling motor that I got off of eBay for about 40 bucks, cut it in half, put the back half back here, and It's controlled by 
a switch on the dashboard to go forward or back. And that's very effective to maneuver the submarine around the pool. It uses a 12 volt battery, which I'll show you that installation in a minute. You may also notice that we've got torpedo tubes. The, I started off with larger plenum chambers, even bigger than this, and the torpedo was too powerful. And then I went down to just two inch tube and that was still too powerful. And I've gone down to one inch PVC. And this is the plenum chamber for the torpedo tube. And the way that works is we have valves in the back that add air to the plenum chamber with this gate valve closed. And it's done by pushing up on this handle. That actuates the valve and the air goes into the plenum chamber. I'll show you this later. When we fire the torpedo, we pull down, it opens this gate valve and lets air into the torpedo tube and the torpedo comes out the front. And I'll show you that later. Again, we don't need much power. Uh, it was too powerful when I started. I was putting a dents in myself as the kids became very accurate at shooting their torpedoes. And I was the likely target. So I highly recommend that you go with a smaller one. And I'm going to replace the left-hand torpedo tube with the one-inch uh, plenum chamber. The periscope is a sealed piece that attaches to the front of the head dome with a windshield adhesive and it's just been strapped down with plumber's tape and a reinforcement to, to make it strong. It's got a cap on the bottom, a T, an elbow. I cut two mirrors and put them into the periscope and again it, it, with uh, windshield adhesive and then I cut a piece of glass onto the front of this uh, squeeze union to allow me to actually open this up if I need to get any water out, but we have had no trouble at all with water. The way the submarine keeps the pilot alive is a small tube that is going into the into the back of the dome uh, through a little t a valve, a small valve that allows us to just the minimum amount of bubbles. And this is just a steady stream of air that comes up into the dome, keeps the water level down below your, sh right at your shoulder level, so it's very comfortable. Your head is always dry, no matter what depth you are. And so this overflows by just putting some bubbles out the side but it only takes just a tiny bit. We find with the scuba tank that we get about 40 minutes on a scuba tank, and with the battery, about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how much they're doing. And of course, the scuba tank is greatly dependent on how many torpedoes they fire. I'll now show you how to hook up the scuba tank and the battery. These are the accessories that we use for the submarine. I modified uh, these pool torpedoes by trimming down the fins a little bit so they fit into the two inch torpedo tube. This is just a normal 12 volt sealed alarm battery. The scuba tank uh, goes in and that's what gives us our air. Uh, some of the grandchildren are smaller so I have a little seat that it's on top of the scuba tank to get their heads up into the dome. And we need some weight in order to ballast the submarine and, and get it to, to be able to submerge. Okay, the scuba tank just goes in and rests on these ropes. And it hooks up to this. I cut this off of a regulator. It was old and expired, and I put a bungee on here to keep the tank from riding forward. In order to balance the submarine, it's important that 
the weight not shift back and forth. So the battery just sits right here and it gets bungeed into position. So now when I turn the air on, you may be able to hear the slight hiss. So we have a steady flow of air up through this tube to the valve. And that can be shut off and it just needs to be cracked open to just a, a slight hiss of air going into the head bubble. And then you now have actuation so that when I want to go up, I want to add air into the system. And you can hear the air being put into the ballast tank. When I want to go down, I want to vent air out of the top of the ballast tank so that the water level in the ballast tank will go up and decrease the buoyancy and the submarine will go down. When I want to fire a torpedo, I charge it by putting the handle up and then fire the torpedo by pulling it down. I'll demonstrate that. In order to fire the torpedo, we charge the plenum chamber and then pull down for the torpedo. The motor is controlled by this switch and you steer with the tiller. So there's forward and it also goes backwards to back the submarine down. To install the weights, I just have this weight belt that fits on here and you can trim the submarine by moving these weights forward or aft. This is the remaining, my next challenge on the submarine is it's easy to get out of trim forward and aft and I need to install some sort of a sliding tray accessible by the pilot to adjust his ballast. And related to that is when you're a tall guy in here, and I'll show you that we do in fact fit, My legs tend to just float around and that changes the trim. The kids fit much better than I do. But I'm 6'4", so if I fit, everybody fits. So I need to have something out here to put the legs on the taller people uh, in order to keep this ballast correct. We're just having fun with this. Every time the kids come down, we hoist it into the pool and it's on patrol. Thank you. I hope that this has answered all of your questions.